the next day and we're trying to look at fixing the battery operated um, Skeletrix file. Of course we have all the tools here that you will see and some things that might help us and we of course have a beer for me which is the most important thing. We have appropriated the dining room table so we cannot keep it going for too long but we've just separated everything out these will have to be cleaned and then we will start working on this. Okay, we're going to set the camera up to record what we're doing and we're going to go from there. Okay, we're off again. Right, the first thing we're going to try and do is take this one and we will open it up. And yesterday we did see that, oh my goodness, it is really bad. Uh, very badly corroded. Three of the batteries have really, really gone bad. So what I'll do is I'll try taking them out and just stick them straight in the recycle box, which I brought with me here. And we'll go with one. Yeah, that's really yucky. Two. Three. Four. Right, there's a lot of crud and other things in here. Uh, but as I'm not going to probably use these, I'm going to try and work out where I can solder in and put a connector in maybe instead that will give me main power yeah so what I will do is I'm going to go and scrape these off and then I'm going to empty this in the bin and we should then come back again okay see you in a minute okay I've just given it a little bit of a clean out and it isn't fully clean. In actual fact, if I wanted to use the batteries, a little bit more cleaning and this would be perfect again. It hasn't really corroded that badly, so it's okay. But what I want to do is I'm gonna cover it up and go underneath and have a look and see if we can wire in directly a hard um, connection. So there's two screws on the bottom here. And we will take them out. Right, this will be, should just probably pop out, I hope. No, it doesn't want to pop. Why not? Why don't you want to pop out? It's just a cover. That's all flexible there. There's nothing on the inside holding it. Is that? No. It's only electrical connection, so it should just pop out. That's it, there's a sonic seal on the bottom, but it doesn't really matter. We can break those off. It's strange having a sonic seal where you have screws. Okay, doesn't matter then. Right, here we go. So, what we've got is we've got power to the controller. And uh, let's see if from the underside we should have power in, power out. Uh, that's power going to the track here. So from here we should have, this is the main power in, and then it directly, this one here should be the negative side going to the battery, I guess, is that right? Positive here, yeah. So we've got the positive line here, and the negative line here. So all we have to do is really solder onto this and this, and then we have got a wired connection. But to make a connector, we found a, variable power supply this is a uk one so we'll have to use an adapter but we need to get a connector that we can actually use now we found an old um, light that no longer works an led one it doesn't work at all and then we're going to try and smash this apart because it has a charging port which looks about the right size so we will try and take it apart and see what's actually happening here so let us move this one out of the way for the moment and we keep those screws there. Right, I hope this comes apart. There is a single screw on it. I have to use my very bad eyes. I can't actually see into it. There's only one screw in here. Now it's more than likely to be clipped together as well. There it is off. Right. Aha. So it's held on by this piece here at the top as well. 
But as we don't really care about this, I'm just going to break it open. And perfect. We have, oh, it's a nice little control board in there. Uh, name it like that. So what we'll do is, this is the connector. It's a one piece unit, all nice and simple. So what we can do is we can take a small snips. I think this one here is the best one. And we just snip it off from the board. We just leave the a little bit of color on just in case you need to use that board for something else. At some point, you'd never know if you're a hoarder like me, hoard or keep everything. You might get it to be useful in about 20 or 30 years time. Okay, that one's out, done. That's for the recycling. Yoik! And we'll put it over there out of the way. Okay. Right, this one here, we're gonna to have to get a piece and see how we can mount it into this one. Right, I'll also have to go up and get a soldering iron set up. The best way of doing this, we're gonna to have to go and connect here, either here or here. So the negative goes that side. It doesn't really matter on this actually where the negative and positive goes. Um, because we can just run the cars backwards around the track. Maybe that would be fun. Um, in actual fact, with this um, output on this uh, transformer, we can actually set it up so that it has a switchable. So we can actually switch the output from positive to negative, negative to positive. So that'd be quite good. Okay, this will fit here if I can find some way of mounting it. Um, I'm just going to actually mount it loose, hopefully on the outside first for a start. Uh, so we will do the negative here and the positive here. Yeah, and that will, that, will, that will reach. Okay, what I'm going to do is we're going to stop there since we've just got, got another step forward. And then I'm going to go and set up a soldering iron and set up so that we can actually come back and do it. Okay. Okay, soldering iron is now heating up. It's here and we've got some solder ready. And so what I've got to do is I, I did strip off while I was waiting the two ends of the wires here. You can't really see it. It's really, really tiny. But what I need to do is I need to clean the contact surface just a little bit. This is electrical contact cleaner. It's a it's pretty standard, normally for spraying into things. Um, so all I want to do is just spray a little tiny touch onto the cloth. And just where I'm going to solder on, just give it a clean up. This is probably what we will use also for cleaning some of the tracks. So it's quite good, it cleans away most of the crop. It should take off any grease that will stop it from making a good contact. So then, this is soldering iron has no flashy light on to tell you, so how are you going to tell if it's hot enough? You put it close to your nose and if it burns you, it actually is hot enough. See? Oh, that's burning. It's, that's a good one. Okay. So, let's start this off and just see if we can actually do the connections. First, try and put some solder onto the actual connection itself. Uh, if this is going to be hot enough. Well, this is really heavy solder and it's not hot enough yet. Okay, we're gonna to have to wait another little while as it's not done yet. Um, is there anything I can do in the meantime? We've got this done. We have another thing to do as this is heating up, uh, but it is to check the speed controllers but this is not it's definitely not hot enough although it feels mm, it does feel hot enough okay we will let that heat up for a little bit longer oh dear okay now it should be hot enough it just this iron it takes a little bit of time to heat up so let's see if it'll actually work and we'll try and put a blob of solder on here first on a neutral Yes, it is melting now nicely. And then we'll do the same on this one. This is the positive. All right, that's okay. Just clean that off. Now we need to keep that hot for the moment. I'm gonna put the wires in, just touching them in to, to get a little bit of a solder connection on them. Alright, so here we go. Let's try and heat that up. Come on. There we go. Alright, 
Okay, that was not the best soldering job I've done. So, but it's in, and now we have to figure out where we're going to actually place the actual connector. Um, the one thing is, with the four batteries in there, of course we can work it out as six volts. So luckily we can do six volts out of the other transformer. So, right, we've got positive is actually on the outside, uh, in the, on the inside, and then negative is on the outside, I guess. Okay, let's disconnect the solving arm and we let that cool down, try not to touch it. Now what I'm thinking is I can actually put this and maybe if I make a cut there, I can probably put a cut into there and lodge it in there somehow. Um, let me just try and do that without damaging the cables of course. Uh, there would be quite a good place if I can get it in there. Okay, so what I'm going to use is I'm going to use a standing knife and try and cut out the edge there and see if I can push this through. Um, and then get some glue and actually glue it in place. Okay, my assistant has just removed the soldering iron because he's much more concerned about safety than I am. Uh, that's because he le he's learning properly in school, but I'm not. Uh, I went to the school of hard knocks. Much more fun. Means that learned by making mistakes so he burnt my hands off a few times he with soldering irons I've got soldering marks everything all over my body but well, not all over my body all over my hands I'm exaggerating again as usual okay here we go just there right, so we're just cutting this here to see if we can get it cut out uh, this one is a bit blunt Unfortunately, but we can see how it goes. Okay. Hmm. That one's coming out. So I might have to get a sharper knife. Actually, why am I doing this? I have a a cutting tool with cutting pieces. I'm an idiot. Uh, where's the cutting wheel? Let's have a look. It's a drill wheel. Uh, is that the cutting mounter? No, that's a small little uh, piece out. But I can just sort of drill it out, I suppose, with a. I put some. Um, just drill it out with that. Is that going narrow enough? Perfect. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm going to need the. Um, there's a small tool here, I think. Here, is that it? Put it in there. Stop that. No. I need something that's actually going to lock this up. I should have read the instructions first. I haven't used one of these in so many years. Okay, I'll pop that in there first. And get that in. Come on, go in. And there we go, it's in. Tighten it up. And then try to find something. Screwdriver with that thing. Nope, I need this, a little, tiny little piece. Ah, there it is. There. Hey, wait one moment. Oh. Ah, I got it. 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 Right. That just locks the extra shaft so that you can actually tighten the thing up properly. I should use the spanner probably to tighten it up. That's tight enough. All right, there we go. Let's put this on here. Now. This is going to make a lot of noise, um, unfortunately, but uh, nothing we can do about it. So let's turn it on. Um, I need to see what speed we're running at first. That's only at 21, that's okay. Got a little faster. Whoa, that doesn't stay on. Let's turn it down a bit then. Oh. <laughs> Where did that go to? <laughs> it 
Okay, I'm flying away. Luckily, I have hundreds of them, but that is actually not tripping on very well. That's a little bit disappointing. Let me get another one out. Got another one here. Got loads of these all over the place. But it really doesn't stick on that one. Oh, that's a bit better. Right, let's try this again. Oh! <laughs> there must be a way of holding this on better. Now, ah, there's a little... If there's a little plate here, there's a little screw at the end that you should put, put a little plate on to stop it from coming off. Um, maybe if I just screw the screw in, does that tighten it up a bit? Now this is where I need glasses. Actually, <laughs> I discovered something new. It's on there and now it won't slip off because... Maybe I should have read the instructions. I should have used a different tool probably as well. But this one is... I should have used a cutting tool, but it's okay. Let's see if that's going to give me something I can just use for the moment. Pop that in here. Oh, there's a cobweb in here. Oh. So if I pop that in there like that, and I get some glue, and glue that in, that should be quite nice. Uh, yeah, that'll be perfect. Okay, I'm going to stop here for the moment, take a little break, and then go and get some glue. I'm going to glue that in place, and then I'll come back. Okay, we're back again, 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 again. Now, I've actually just glued this one in lightly at the moment. So what we'll have to do with this piece is it will have to sit on top, but we'll have to cut a little bit of it out so that the actual it can go over the um, new piece. Uh, get out of there. So I'm going to have to mark it up approximately first. This, as this is a throwaway kind of thing, it doesn't really matter so much. But I want to try and do it a little bit okay. Put a mark there. And a mark there, and that should be fine. Now I just have to guesstimate how far in I have to go. I can always cover it with some piece of plastic or something. Now this I'm going to have to try and cut out in a different way. So I'm going to have to change the tool on here. Uh, it's really good. I can't actually see the screw here, so I'm having to do everything by feel. Uh, that's nice and loose for that one. Uh, bub, bub, bub. Okay, put the locking mechanism back in. Uh, spin that until it goes in fully. There we go. Then undo. And then what I'm going to use is I'm going to use a little cutting wheel to see if I can cut it and take out the actual pieces. Now, why is that not fitting in there correctly? It doesn't matter. Okay. Let's find the right one. Here it is here. Now that doesn't look like a cutting wheel one, but actually it is, because the cutting wheel I have to put onto it. Uh, if you notice, we've got rid of the, um, the uh, soldering iron for safety first, of course. Uh -huh. uh, uh, screwdriver here, oh, there's that one's flathead. Um, I need to get the cutting wheels, here's the cutting wheels, let's get one of them out. And then we take the screwdriver again, we should be able to undo that and there's two tiny little, little carbon washers here so let's take one of them off if we can separate them well my hands are a little bit big for this here we go right pop that through there the washer on one side and washer on the second side and then we should be able to put this back onto the shaft before we pop it back into the machine. Let's tighten it all up. Give it a good tighten here because we don't want this one flying off. Now normally if there's anybody young watching this uh, I should be wearing safety goggles uh, but I'm not. Uh, I do have safety goggles someplace. It's okay, we're running cutting plastic, so it's not metal. So there shouldn't be any major bits that are going to come out and damage me. So but as well as that, I'm going to try and do it 
well away from my hands and my eyes and we're going to try and do it. Um, goggles, not earmuffs. Okay. Oh, I just damaged the thingy because somebody was distracting me. So what I'm doing here is I'm just making a few cuts in it to make it a little bit easier and then I'll just try and cut them out. Right, that should be almost okay I think. Let's pop that over there. Well, it's got a little bit of mess. I'm going to have to tidy that up before, my, my, before Tracy sees it. Um, ah, here it is over here. So then bring this back and just make sure that we can get that around it. It needs to go a little bit further in. Ah, somebody has appeared with my uh, goggles, probably on camera. Okay, let's go. Thing running just to see if I got the right action. Almost perfect. That's good. That's far enough. Okay, that was a good cut. Well, it's time to celebrate with a little slurp. <sighs> That's Bex. Right. Let's see if we can click this back together. It looks like it's held in fairly well. That's gone in there fairly well. Now, before screwing it in or doing anything else and gluing it down, I really probably should have done some testing, um, such as checking the connections to make sure that the soldering was actually quite good. Let's just open this up again. It's We know it's okay. It wasn't designed to have this power thing on, so let's get that off. Come on. Okay, now, I have had to borrow a nice piece of tech which is my eldest son's and it is a um, digital multimeter that's also an oscilloscope and everything else but I only just need it to be for checking the connections we need it for two jobs here and a few others later on it's a really useful way of actually testing oh there um, let's get this out first um, and put it here and then I just need to get out the, the multimeter leads and I will use it on that. This one should have a stand, I think. Does it have a stand? No, it doesn't have a stand. Oh, it does have a stand, yes. There's the stand. It's a really quite nice um, unit. Uh, let's switch on the power. A lot different from the ones I was growing up that you couldn't have a, a digital multimeter. I just had a readout, but actually, when I first started working, all of the multimeters we had had a nice little hand that actually went to where you were supposed to go and you read it off the chart. Um, okay, so this one is on DC voltage. We don't want that. We need to go on to... My God, there's a amount of mem things on here. Let's see, uh, where is his cables connections? That's the charging cable. There's the oscilloscope cables. We need to get the other cables out. I want to get just the standard cables. There's one. There's two. Okay, here we go. Aha, we've got it. So, uh, for voltage, we want to get ohms, so it should be on the same side, anyway, so that's the common. Why does not work? Because it's got a, it's got a connect, it's got a, um, I've never seen that before, it's got a little um, thingy to protect it. Oh, that's quite cool. On both of them, so let's connect this up. We're on VDC at the moment. We don't want VDC. We need to go to something else. Now, here's the question. Ohm. I can see it on the screen. So I guess you just go, no. Yep, ohms. There we go. So it's on overload at the moment. We don't know if you can see it there. And so basically, whenever we get a circuit, it should go to show zero. Yeah, and there it is. It's fully connected. Right. So 
If we test now, I'm going to check first the center connection onto the power. And there we go, that's connected correctly. And then I have to try and get the outside connection and check it on the negative. Uh, actually, if I do it from the outside, it'll be much easier. There we go. It's actually gone zero as well. That is really quite, kind of cool. So the connection's quite good. While I have this multimeter out, it may be a good idea to test the actual controllers, the, these controllers here, which are single controllers, um, we can actually check the resistance on those also to see if it is changing. Ah, these probes are not long enough. How to make them longer? Can I make them longer? Uh, yeah, that's it. Comes out. Right, let's see if that goes into there. That does. And this one, try the same. Right, let's see if we get some kind of a res registration. It doesn't really matter which way around they go. That's got overload. So now I need 50 million pairs of hands. No, it's not making a connection or else it's no good. That is definitely not making a connection in there. Let's see if he's got some different probes. Um, we've got a longer probe. Crocodile clips for the oscilloscope. Um, and there are also crocodile clips for a different kind of connection. Right, this is not working very well. There must be a way of changing these. Is there a way of getting that out? No. Okay. Um, what we can do, if I was clever, what I can do is I can actually stick it into the connection here. So that is now in this connection here. And so we can then check it across here, I guess. I'm going to have to ask for a hand to come in and actually press this when I tell it to. There comes the hand. Um, let's do this checking here. That's okay. Right. Can you press? Nothing. Okay, that could be an issue. Press release, press release. Nothing. Okay. That is going to be a problem. Let's try it from here. Try again. Ah, hang on. Press it now once. Hold it. Okay, we've got some... Uh, all the way in. No. It's not really working. Press it all the way in. No. Okay, not working. Let's get the second one and test that also. Um, there was another connector here. Another controller here someplace and I can't see it anywhere on the table. Some of you probably are seeing it, but ah, here it is. You should have told me. Okay. I see the reason why it didn't work. It wasn't connecting properly. Because without the back on it, the connector was pushing out. Okay, now I have both of them connected. We will use the multimeter again to test. So I need my secret hand to come back in. On the red one first, please. All right, let us see if we can get this, this tan. Put this in and get a connection. Nothing. Try this one. Nothing. Unless this is only single-sided boards. Okay, it may be that. Let's try it on the other side. Right, that's it. Re leave it go slowly. Press it very slowly. Okay, there is something going on. Is that the whole way in? Yeah, you can see that there is some difference going through. So the connections are not fairly good. Let's try the second one. We'll hand this to a secret squirrel again. And just check that at the same time. And there we go, we can see it's going to, from overload into different. Actually, that one's not working as well as the other one. No, sorry, let's try again. Hello oh there, it's switched off, power save. That's the problem with things that got run on power, they try to save it. Right, okay, try again. No. 
it's gone onto voltage, that's why. Right. Right. Switch it back onto ohms. Test again. All right, that's okay. Check it here. All right. Yeah, it's moving and then goes to overload. Okay, that's, they seem to be working, so we, do, we won't take those apart unless we have a problem. Let's switch this off now. Okay, so now we've got to reassemble this. I can disconnect these two. And we will put the back back on, and then we'll take a, a break from filming for a second while we get this all fi fixed off. Once I get this back 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 in, it may be an idea to. It's in, in there nicely. It's in there nicely. All the way in. That's actually went in surprisingly well. Here's the two screws that actually hold it in. And we pop both screws in and do it away. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to set up a connection. We can use the same connection as the um, uh, we use for the soldering iron to actually test the power output into the power socket and checking and seeing if we've got some power on this. But at the moment, everything is looking quite good. We now have a, a unit that we can actually plug into the boards. Uh, we don't need the batteries anymore. I just get that a little bit of a clean up. And so everything is nearly ready to go. We'll probably have a look at some of the connections and clean them up. Let me put this uh, very expensive um, digital multimeter oscilloscope and everything else away first, um, because if I damage it, I will be killed. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Um, while I was off camera, I discovered a little problem. That little problem was that when you connect this box in, where we had put the outlet for the power, it was right up against the track, so it couldn't do it. So what I did is I just took it off and I re-glued it in here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just quickly test the voltage. I've set the unit up for six volts. Um, just connect that in there. It looks a little bit crooked for some reason because it didn't click in correctly. There we go. Right, where is switch on this one here? That one's there, connected, and we should be able to plug in the power then. Here, there we go. So the power is in with a bit of luck. What we should see, we're on DC voltage already, so that's good. We should be able to see no voltage on the tracks at the moment. Uh, yeah, it's showing almost nothing. So I don't know which one of these ones it is, but if I press that one, nothing happens. If I press the black, oh, don't be going off. Come back on, thank you. Press this one. Yes, we get six volts on there on full and it comes up and down a little bit. Yeah, okay, so. This means the power is now working. So if we try the other track. Oops, sorry. Oops. Here we go. And we get our six volts as well. Not six volts, I guess. Oh, that's really strange. Okay. Five, six volts coming in. I haven't got good connections. Right. So now we have a situation where we have got power to the tracks without any batteries. Yes. So it won't cost the fortune to run this. Now, I'm a little bit worried in that I had a look at these cars and both of them have the bottom track guides broken off and also the pickups. So I'm not going to be able to do anything with this car or this car for the moment. I'm going to have to try and make new contacts. So, but I want to test the track anyway to see if it actually works. So let me take one of the other cars from the Skeletric set. Now, Skeletrix doesn't work on 6 volts, it actually works on 12. But this is a truck, and it is a um, really nice, big, heavy truck. It should work on 12 volts, so what I will do is I will change, if I can find my screwdriver, here's one here. I'll change the voltage on this output to 12 volts. That should be 12 volts. We'll just do a quick test to make sure. DC voltage, and we will. This one was the black track, so we'll do this on the black track. And we got 12 volts, that's perfect. Okay, so the actual t test is going to be first of all, put this on the track and hold the back up so that it doesn't actually do anything. 
and let's see if we get any any noise wow but it works and then let's just see if it drives a little bit take that out of the way and it works okay so that's really good the tracks seem to be have good connections the other one we'll try yeah, that, that's also got good connection right so we're going to cut it for tonight and say and do this another time i'm going to see if i can repair these cars because this truck is way too big you wouldn't be able to get two of the bigger cars onto this track i'm going to see if i can find some pieces to try and fix the brushes on this and then we're going to try and make it so we know that we're going to put the track together maybe put it down and then see if we need to clean it all if we don't need to clean it then we'll be okay um after that then i'll see if i can manufacture something for this and we'll do that on the next video okay for now cheers